What's up YouTube, Cliff here from the Sunday Drive. Today we're working on my brother's 2016 WRX and we're gonna show you how to change the front and rear differential fluid. So we're working on my brother's 2016 WRX and doing the front and rear differential fluid changes. Now the one really nice thing is that the front differential shares the fluid with the transmission since he has the standard or manual transmission. So you just have one fill plug and one drain plug and that makes it really convenient. Now if you want to know your maintenance schedule, it's in this booklet right here, your warranties and maintenance little booklet. It is not in the owner's manual, so you need to check this for your schedule. And they recommend that you change it every 30,000 miles or 48,000 kilometers. So what do we need today? We need this 7590 weight synthetic Subaru uh, gear lube, and we will have a link to this in the description. You're also gonna need something that you probably don't have, but a T70 Torx bit. Uh, this is just the drain plug for the front differential. Uh, it's just a half inch driver for the rear. That's all you guys are gonna need that's special. We're also gonna to wanna to have a fluid pump to get this fluid into your differentials. But let's get started and show you how to do it. Now, as with any of our videos, when you're working on your vehicle, make sure that you're working in a safe environment, especially if you're underneath of it. Always support a vehicle with jack stands, not just a jack. Uh, so just be safe while you're working. And if you're ever not sure of something, be sure to check your owner's manual or your local dealer. Now, when you are jacking up your vehicle and doing differential fluid changes, you wanna make sure that you have the vehicle level uh, when you're checking, because it's very important to check the levels uh, while your vehicle's level. If it's on an angle, you're not gonna get a correct read of your fluids. So we're gonna start on the rear differential first, since it's the easiest one to do. Now, one thing you're gonna notice that's different on your car is that we have an aftermarket exhaust. This is an AWE touring exhaust, and it's really nice. We have a full install guide, as well as sound clips at the link above, and we'll have a link to that video in the description. So if you're curious about this exhaust, check that video out. So as I mentioned, we're gonna start right back here. Now there is a fill and drain plug, and whenever you have a setup like this, you always wanna open the fill plug first, just in case for some reason you can't get this open, you never wanna drain out your fluid and not be able to add fresh fluid back in. So always start with the fill plug, fill plug, and both of these just take a half inch driver. So get a nice big breaker bar on there, and that'll make your job a lot easier once we get it in there anyway. Whenever working on a vehicle, especially on undercarriage components that are exposed to the, the salt and grime of the road, it's always a good idea to hit it with some PB blaster. Now we're gonna take our half inch driver. Slide that in there. And lefty loosey. Man, it's tight. There it goes. Definitely want to have a long driver on this because that was pretty tight. Now we'll loosen the bottom one and there should be 0.8 quarts in your rear differential. I don't want this flying off of my face. <laughs> wow, that is tight. Get the torch out. This was very tight, so it is definitely going to take some force to get that one off. As I mentioned, there should be 0.8 quarts in your rear differential. And this is definitely the plug that has the magnet. Um, this level of buildup, I think, is pretty normal for a rear differential. Um, pretty compared to what was on my truck. Obviously, a truck is not a WRX, but you're definitely going to have some wear back there. So I wouldn't be too concerned if it looks like this. If someone's watching this video and this is horrifying, please let us know. But I think this is pretty normal. So I'm just cleaning the gunk out of the threads. You can see very clearly where the threads were exposed to the elements and the ones that were inside the differential. Now, there definitely was not a gasket or 
any type of sealant on here. I just wiped this off and this came this clean. So there's no gasket or sealant on your rear differential nuts. Reinstall your drain plug and torque it between 36 and 38 foot pounds. Now you're gonna need a pump like this one. This is a really nice one because it actually screws right onto the top of the bottle. Um, and I'll have a link to hopefully this pump or a similar one in the description of this video. Um, now I have used this pump for some other fluids. Ideally you should get one pump for each type of fluid that you're gonna use just to avoid any cross contamination. Um, I know this was used for gear lube on my truck and since this is also gear lube, it should be somewhat similar. However, just to be safe, I'm gonna squirt a little bit of the new gear lube through here just to remove any potential cross contamination. You wanna be careful using anything that would like actually clean it because uh, something like a uh, degreaser could stay in the line and then potentially contaminate the oil that you're putting into your differential. All right, now for the differential, you, as I said, you wanna make sure that it's level so this can get completely full. You wanna fill it till it comes, starts to come out the top fill hole or 0.8 quarts. So if for some reason your car is uh, angled and you realize that you're almost out of your full quart here, you just wanna keep an eye on that because it should only be 0.8 quarts in your differential or if it's angled the other way and it starts to run out too early, you need to make sure that you lower the car down, level it. Uh, so that you can get the full 0.8 quarts in there. Just make sure you have a catch pan underneath so that when it starts to run out, there's somewhere to catch it. GM, why don't you have a fill and drain plug on your differentials instead of making us make a mess? Unfortunately, this pump does not have a very long throw, so it is going to take a lot of pumps to empty the bottle. <laughs> We're adding this to our new gym uh, where we paint ceilings and walls for hours to work upper body strength and forearms and shoulders. All right, so you can see on the side of the bottle we have some lines right there, so I'd say we have about a quarter left or so just just over a quarter left of the bottle so pretty soon we should start to see some fluid running out of this there we go now you want to make sure if you have the line you're filling with um, in there that that is not causing you to fill early because the line's sitting in there taking up more space so just pull the line out and then give it a couple more pumps all right and then just let that drain for a little bit. The outflow from the fill plug has slowed down significantly, so it's just a, a tiny drip coming out at this point. So we're gonna put the fill cap back in, and we're gonna also torque this between 36 and 38 foot-pounds. Now you never wanna use like an anti-seize or something similar. Depending on what you put in here, it could potentially react with the oil inside. So I would just be safe and just leave it the way it is. So now we're gonna do the front differential and gearbox right up here and we learned our lesson on the back we've switched to a much larger breaker bar and this is where you're going to need that t70 socket we'll have a link to one in the description but any t70 socket will work preferably one on a half inch breaker bar all right and just like the rear this also takes the 75 w90 weight gear lube now, if you have driven the vehicle, this is going to be hot, so definitely a good idea to let it cool down. This has actually been up here for over an hour, and it's still pretty warm. Not hot enough to burn, but definitely let it cool down. And this takes 3.5 quarts. Now, just like the drain plug on the back, this also has a magnet on it. And you can see there's a little bit on there, not nearly as much as the rear differential, though. So we're going to go ahead and clean that up while this finish is draining. Unlike the rear plugs, there is actually a gasket on this front differential and it is recommended that you change it there you go 
Here's the new one right here and we'll have this part number listed in the description of the video as well as a link to purchase it. And once this is done draining, we'll get the plug back in and we'll fill this up. Now it took us a few minutes actually to find this, so don't be ashamed if you had to watch this video to find it. But right here on the passenger side of your transmission, and again, this is a standard transmission or manual, uh, is a dipstick. And that's where we're gonna fill to. So you could get to this from the top. However, we're just gonna fish our line up there and pump it in. On the dipstick, there is a low mark and a full mark. I'm not sure uh, how large of a difference it is between these two marks, but what we're gonna do is add three quarts since it takes three and a half, and then check where we're at on the dipstick. And then we'll just keep adding a little bit at a time until we get up to that full mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and add three quarts to this. Um, not going to make you guys sit through the entire process but we're going to add three quarts into the transmission and front differential and we're going to check the fluid level now if you don't want to fill it from the bottom you can put the car down and you're going to reach basically directly below your intercooler right here and so you can see where my hand is coming out right from back here and you can reach the dipstick. That's it guys, that's how you change the front and rear differential fluid on a 2016 WRX. Now this process should apply to most Subaru vehicles, especially ones with manual transmissions. If you guys have any comments or questions, please leave them below. If it's your first time tuning in, hit that subscribe button and if the video was helpful and you enjoyed it, give us a big thumbs up and as always, the bell notification will help you stay notified whenever we put out a video. We have a lot of other videos up on my brother's Subaru and we have a lot more coming, several shots that we haven't had a chance to edit yet, but we will have those up soon. So stick around for those and we will see you guys here next time.